I've always respected roofers. It's a hard job, but it's a job that has to be done correctly. You're going to watch these guys spend a lot of time just putting down shingles. But even when you're just putting down a shingle, if you don't get it right, if you don't get the nail placement right, if you don't get the spacing right, and especially when you're doing the flashings and the transitions and the, the ridges and the plumbing vents and the roof vents, if you don't do those things exactly right, it's a one strike and you're out kind of a deal because it's going to leak and a leak is going to cause damage and it's going to cost somebody money and that's going to discredit you in your job or maybe cost you your job. So it's a kind of thing where even though there is repetition, there has to be concentration. Even though you're tied off with a rope, you don't want to fall because it's going to hurt. And it takes a degree of mental toughness to get up on the roof every day and do a hard job. I hope you enjoy watching these guys. I can tell you that I am enjoying watching these shingles go on. Now before we get started, I want to give another big thank you to Tamco Building Products. They have sponsored this episode by providing us with all of these beautiful shingles. As you can see, they are absolutely gorgeous and I just could not be more pleased. If you are enjoying this video series, will you do me a favor and let them know that you appreciate their support also. Valleys always require some extra attention. This method is called a lap cut valley. Now there are special metal flashings that can be installed to create what's called an open valley and you will see one of those later on. But I prefer this lap cut because there's no metal exposed to the weather which will certainly eventually cause it to rust through. Whether it's 20 or 30 or 40 years from now, metal will deteriorate and these shingles will certainly last at least that long. Besides that, a lap cut valley looks terrific. Now when you're installing these, you want to get that underlap up onto the opposing roof pitch at least 12 to 16 inches. So there's no chance for the water to roll down the pitch, across the valley, and up and over the edge of the underlap. Now granted, it may roll under there a little bit, an inch or two, but gravity's going to bring it immediately back to the center of the valley and on its way to the ground. A lot of roof leaks happen because valleys like this get blocked with leaves or debris which keep the water from flowing freely and back it up, especially on lower pitched roofs. This can create a leak behind some shingles or behind some nails. But it won't be a problem on this roof primarily because we have a nice steep pitch here. Now yes, there are a lot of oak and madrone trees on the hillside behind the house whose leaves, some of which at least, will undoubtedly find their way up onto our roof. But they won't stay here for long. And I think it's very possible that this same roofing material could be here 50 years from now. Now shingles are a really old technology and almost any material that you can think of has been used to shingle a roof. 
whether it's wood or bark or grass or stone or metal or clay, you name it, it's been tried. And it's kind of neat that it's still pretty much the best way to waterproof a roof. Now the starter course of shingles is installed first at the edge of the roof and fastened with nails. Right over the top of that, directly over the top of the starter course, the next course covers the joints between the lower shingles as well as the nails that are holding it down. The subsequent courses of shingles, each one above the last, overlap and covers again the butt joints and the nails that are holding down the previous course and so on up to the top of the ridge. Always remember the first and final rule of roofing is that water always flows downhill in the fastest straightest route and so if the roofing is properly installed the water will roll right over the top of all the shingles never touching one of the nails or leaking through any exposed butt joint until it drops right off the edge of the roof. Now you've got to realize and keep in mind that every penetration through these shingles is a potential leak and that includes the thousands of nails that these guys put in. You never want to see a nail head exposed to the weather because in almost every case they must be covered by another shingle that is overlapping them or perhaps a piece of flashing. As you may have noticed in our previous episodes, these shingles have a blue line indicating the location where the nails go. You absolutely 100% have to stick to this. If you go below this line, the nails are not properly covered from the top, and if you're above this line, you're not properly gripping all of the layers of the shingle itself. So stick to the line. The real technical part of this roof is the front of the house where the garage meets the house itself. Now many of you pointed this out years ago when we first announced and showed the house plan as a potential roof leak situation, a potential problem. And believe me, I heard you then and I hear you now. Mike Morris sent out what I can only refer to as his special forces team for this particular task. They're both named Randy, and this transition is squarely in their wheelhouse. As you can see, there are really three separate pitches happening here, and all are connecting at more or less the same point. At the end of the video, I'll climb up here and really show you and try to explain the way it works, particularly in the little short valley up here at the very peak. But for now, just enjoy the show watching these guys go absolutely ballistic on this roof in the best possible way.
Flashing is the steel material that you've seen used on the edges, in the valleys, up against the house sidewalls. It's especially good in areas where the slope is low or right up against the house itself. Keep in mind, asphalt shingles are not made to bend or fold. They lay flat. And using flashing allows you to waterproof and take care of corners and angles where the shingles just won't work. These, piecings of, these pieces of flashing are called step flashing. And they work just like a shingle. One piece at each course. And each little piece of flashing overlaps the nails on the flashing piece below it creating a little gutter against the wall line. In other places on the house, we've used side wall or end wall flashing. Pretty much just a big piece of L flashing in 10 or 12 foot segments without all the little steps. The excavator stuff like punched in. Now these shingles going on the top here at the ridge are called appropriately a ridge cap and specifically what we are installing here is referred to as a designer ridge because it's a shingle that is specifically designed to be used as a cap. Now you can buy and use regular three tab shingles, match the color, cut it into pieces and create a cap with it, but it's not ideal. Remember that shingles are designed to lay flat. And when you bend a segment of a regular shingle over a ridge, particularly a steep ridge like this, it's going to cause it to wear out quicker right down that center line. Designer ridge shingles like these come extra thick, two layers, pre-shaped perfectly for a ridge and have glue or mastic in just the right spot to seal around the nails and lock things down tight. Now keep in mind, if you live in an area with a high wind or a consistent wind, make sure that you install these things so that prevailing wind direction tends to help hold the shingles down and not be constantly trying to lift them up and tear them off your roof.
Do you remember how much effort we put into the big vents in the bird blocks under our eaves when we were framing? We made those custom blocks on site so that plenty of fresh air could vent through, up, under the roof, and into the attic. Well, now it's time to finish that task by putting vents near the top of the roof. It's not enough to create a place where air can come in. It will do you no good at all unless you've got plenty of room for the air to go out. So we're using a couple different methods to accomplish this. In the bonus room, over the garage, and above the stairs, and over the patio, we're installing a continuous ridge vent. This is a continuous vent material that sits just underneath the designer ridge cap. On the parts of our roof where there's an attic space, we're using these big solar fans. Mike Morris recommended these. They use solar power to turn on and run a little fan motor to really draw air out of the attic. It should keep the temperature pretty close to the outside ambient air temperature throughout most of the year. This is an excellent example of how sometimes it pays to know somebody that has specific knowledge about the best products and techniques and practices for your specific area. I'm sitting here at the junction between the garage roof and the house in the spot that was the trickiest piece of the project to frame and the trickiest piece of the project to roof. This valley is way different than the other valleys on this house in that it's a much lower slope. The pitch on this valley is about three feet of fall in 12 feet of run, about a 312 slope, which is right on the bubble of whether or not you can even use an asphalt, especially an architectural asphalt shingle because of the because of the characteristics of the shingles as they raise up over the lower courses it takes a real pitch to get the water off of an asphalt shingle and the slope in this valley is too low for that besides that this valley is going to collect oak leaves we've got oak leaves and a few maple trees around here there's going to be debris that gets in this valley over the years and so this valley needs to be slick the shingles are cut back about eight inches there's 16 inches of overlap between the lower and upper pieces of this valley metal. The flashing up at the top has been caulked in. The caulking you use in a situation like this is Vulcum, by the way. That stuff is, I mean, it's suitable for use on submarines, almost. So we have step flashing, we have roof to wall flashing, we have valley flashing. It's all painted, it's all slick, it's all sloped, and brother, it is watertight. So separate from the way that this valley is going to carry the water down and onto the other roof, into the gutters and out to the street, separate from the way that it is flashed and counter flashed right there where the valley ties into the gable end and sealed with about a pint of Vulcan, this little roof pitch back up in here was the piece that Steve Hood helped me imagine when I was trying to decide how to build all this. This is, let me call it an understack. I don't think I've ever made an understack before. But this roof diaphragm runs clear up until it butts into the bottom of this overhang. It is flashed, it is caulked, there's step flashing, roof to wall flashing, and besides that, 
There will never be any water up here that doesn't come out of a pigeon when he builds his nest in this spot. It is perfectly dry, and if there is water, if we have a thousand year snow event and there's ever a snow drift laying here, any water that gets in here is gonna end up in this valley, just like the water that falls out of the sky. Now you may be looking and thinking about the number one cardinal rule that water runs downhill, and saying to yourself, wait a minute Wadsworth, the water that runs downhill on that pitch is gonna run into this barge rafter. Not so. I've held the cut up two inches and there's step flashing behind the barge that creates another little valley effect that will carry the water that runs down this little pitch into that step flashing straight out, moving east until it too ends up in the storm drain system. This piece of flashing is a little unique. It doesn't happen like this very often. What we have here is a gable dying into a gable end at an angle, which means that we do not have step flashing that's running parallel to the pitch creating a gutter. We have sidewall flashing against a wall that is fading away because watch this. When the water runs down this wall, if it ever does, and it hits this flashing, it does not proceed parallel to the wall, but goes straight to the ground immediately out onto the shingles. So all this has to do is transfer any water that gets on the siding onto this roof and it will immediately move away from the flashing itself. The flashing doesn't carry any water, it diverts water, which is radically different than what happens against most gable ends. While I'm sitting right here, let me just point out how sleek these things are. I mean, they're a low profile, but they make sort of a, a distinctive line, you know, with their projection at the top of the ridge. There's an uninterrupted 5 8 well-screened, well-filtered passage for the, I just like them. They look good, they work good, they are good. I think Tamco makes a nice ridge cap to go over that continuous vent. So I could not be happier with these shingles. Everything about them, the uniform color, the appealing texture, the designer features of this ridge, the way they went down, the way they glued themselves together by the second day, by the second day and it was not even that warm. These things were one piece and now they are welded. I mean, it feels, walking on it, like a one-piece membrane that's perfectly conformed to my roof. Two thumbs up, Tamco, and thank you for sponsoring our project with this roofing material. It makes a huge contribution to the appearance and the functionality and to the sustainability of what we're trying to do here with this series on Essential Craftsman. Now, before we sign off here, I just want to let you know, if you've just stumbled onto this channel, that we have a video series that is including every single step of this project from the first time we walked onto the lot when it was nothing but grass and blackberries and we're going to take it right till the key slides into the front door throws a deadbolt back and we step into the front room thanks for watching essential craftsman and keep up the good work tamco roofing provides some really excellent how-to videos regarding the installation of their shingles you should know that we did not follow those perfectly but I certainly recommend that you do. Please watch our video titled The Incredible Asphalt Shingle for more information and see the description below for links where you can watch videos about their recommended installation procedures. Last of the shingles went on yesterday, first of the snow fell today. Happy Thanksgiving indeed. <laughs>